Hi guys, it's me again, I'm Radek from Dwomli and today I will show you how to build user authentication and we will start banking transactions. If you like the video, remember about thumb up and about subscribing our channel and about turning on notifications. Do, 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 do. Now I will tell you a bit more what we will be doing today. It's super exciting because we are going into the bank transactions. But before we will go into, we need to authenticate our user, we need to let application know for sure if it's our user, we have permission to do any transactions, we have permission to do users, so we will work a bit with the JVT token. We will do a bit refactoring because we had a panic on everything, so now we will recover from panic and I will show you how to handle the server internal error. We will do a bit of refactoring of API endpoints because there we had... Uh, ah, the file was growing, so I will show you how to create some functions instead of duplicating the code. And we will work a bit with the accounts, we will be updating account and doing some logic for that. Let's start! Okay, as the first step we need to refactor the read body function. We will pass all of the logic that is related to reading body of the call inside this function and we'll use it later. Next, we will refactor the logic that is related to the message of the call and preparing message and sending a response. Let's take a look. We need to remember to change it for the call. Now we need to refactor function body. You can see our body will be just firing read body function. And we can refactor a logic related to the response. We can do the same with register. Let's format it. Okay, our API is ready. Now we will handle the panic that is in our handle error function. So our application will have kind of middleware that will return to the user information source something internal happened. We use handle error now mostly for the internal errors or mistakes. In the next episodes, of course, we'll be adding some more logic to the handle error to inform user what's going on in more details. It's something like HTTP interceptor that will go into our HTTP call will handle that and uh, if it's a problem as application is panicking we'll use a recover so our application will know something is bad it will log the problem for us inside the console and will return the message for the user let's take a look how it's used
and we need to use next to the serve HTTP. Now we can use in the router. So we have our middleware used during the routing. Now we need to move the error response inside the interfaces. It will be shared through the application, so it's needed to like have it in a like more global place than just api.go. Now we can start uh, creating function get user that will be related to getting user from the database. We will take id and jvt token and we'll return like map string. Now we will need the function validate token that will validate inside get user. We will take id and jvt token here and we'll return true or false. First we need to clear the jvt token from like delete this bearer string. Here we will map claims, so we will have like uh, object easy to use for later. And here we can start verifying token. And here we will start verifying token with using the token password. I just hard coded it. You can do your own and the best you can go into dot end. In the next episodes I will show you how to handle the sensitive variables inside the dot end file. Here we need to change the ID that was string from the API into the number. And here we can check if the token is valid and the ID from the decoded token is the same that ID we are trying to take from the user. So application will know we are the owner. If not, we will return false. In the users.go in paper response function, we will need to add some refactor. We will take third param with token. It will be true or false. That will mean for us, if the with token is true, we will add JVT token and uh, prepare sign the new JVT token to the response. If no, we will just prepare the response user and accounts. As you can see, we will add it in the login as true in prepare response and in the register we will add it as true as well, so from register and login we will return JVT. Now in the get user we can start validating it. So if it's valid we'll start logic, if no we will just return the response, sorry. Actually, the logic will be really, really similar to the login one, just without checking password.
Here we need to change, we are looking for user by ID, not by the name. And here we will prepare a response, it will be really similar, just without tokens, so we will use false. If our logic in users.go is ready, we can go into the api.go. Now we will create the function getUser for the API. We will take like a response and a request as a params. And we will use like gorilla mooks vars. We'll take authentication from header. Oh, it's named authorization here. Here we need to create the next uh, API endpoint. ID here so we can use it as a gorilla mux vars oh we need to delete the braces and we will define it as a get fine now we will go into user accounts and we will create uh, the file user account.go Inside the file we need to de declare the package, it will have the same name, oh I forgot to add .go, and inside the file we will create the function update account, that will have possibility to change the amount of money that we have on our bank account. We just need db call. About db calls, don't worry, we have too many like connection and close connection. In next episodes, we will go into the connection pools, so you will see how it can be done if we have more users to not kill db by every time connection on the fire the function. and we can close db. We can start the application now to check it. It works and we can start testing it here. We need to remember about add authorization as our token that we have from the login. As you can see we have all of the data so the getting user works. Congratulations! Congratulations! Now you have user authentication, you started banking transactions, your application is growing a lot now, it's a bit more functional and I think you are ready to continue with the bank transactions, you are ready to go into the next level of the financial application that we will be doing in the next episodes. Uh, in next episode, next, next episodes, we will be doing a bit uh, buying and selling some like financial stocks as well. We will be building financial marketplace and we will start investing a bit after a few episodes, of course. So I cannot wait to show you all of that. I'm super excited about building this project. It's super cool. I really like it. If you like it too, uh, remember about giving us thumb up subscribing the channel, turning on notifications so you will have the info immediately about the new episodes and you will start building the new features as first. Thank you for watching and see you in the next episodes. Bye!